Members of Guam's gay community are miserable and in need of being saved by Jesus Christ. That's according to the controversial leader of Christian Fellowship Ministries, Pastor Wayman Mitchell. When I asked if he had a message for Guam's large gay community, he told me only Jesus can show them the way. They're not happy. They're miserable, and Jesus Christ can set them free. We have uh, people from every walk of life that have come to Christ and been transformed. That's really what they long for. Mitchell, the founder of CFM, which includes Guam's own Victory Chapel and 2,300 other churches in nearly 100 different countries, was on Guam conducting a faith healing at Epau Beach. Mitchell drawing his share of controversy. He's been accused of being a Christian cult leader who brainwashes followers. And he's also been the target of several investigative news pieces, including one by Dan Rather. His use of a homophobic slur during a sermon about men who wear earrings raised some eyebrows, but largely escaped national attention. But I wouldn't wear anything that little faggots are going to wear, because those are things that little faggots put in your ears. Adrian Davis, a social work intern with Guam's Gay and Lesbian Alliance, is no stranger to the slur. That's a term that... I have dealt with over the past few years that I've been growing up in school. I've been called that and it's hard. I don't think it's appropriate to be calling people that, but at the same time, maybe sometimes we just need to help educate people. While Mitchell's remarks may have sparked outrage from LGBTQ groups in the states, here on Guam, Mitchell's comments were met with tolerance and strangely enough, acceptance. At the end of the day, it's, it's what people choose to believe. People have become more accepting uh, for one, like my father, uh, of the lifestyle, but at the same time, I think comments like that may cause some confusion with people who are already trying to understand us. And Mitchell says what he preaches may offend some, but the gospel hasn't always been accepted by everyone. As a matter of fact, Christ was crucified because he was confronting sin. While gala reps may disagree with what Mitchell is saying, they say they respect his beliefs, even if they believe those beliefs are wrong. We just need to understand where people are coming from. What would your message be to him? We're not miserable, um, and we're very happy. Are you miserable like the pastor says? No, not at all. I'm actually very happy. Thank you. <laughs> what else was happy? The atmosphere. Almost festive during the faith healing at Epau. A lot more festive than, say, a traditional Catholic mass. The fact a church like Victory Chapel is expanding on Guam, an island that is 95% Catholic, shows recent scandals in the church are causing some to jump ship and swim in unfamiliar waters. Mitchell says people from different faiths come over to worship at the CFM family of churches, but he believes over the years, Catholics have constituted the largest segment of newcomers to CFM. A lot of the young people that came in were ex-Catholics and make very good converts. Mitchell wasn't always saved. In fact, he was on Guam way before his first church opened its doors here in 1984. He was stationed here in 1954, and he had fond memories of the island as he saw it post-World War II. I've been on this beach uh, not far from here with five or six friends, drinking beer, breaking coconuts off the trees and cutting them open with a machete. Maybe the increase in Victory Chapel's numbers is due to the church's willingness to pound the pavement and shake the tree to find new followers. In every way possible we can to spread the gospel, we will do it. And uh, we go as far as uh, going out on the street using a bullhorn and telling people about Jesus. They also go on the offensive, calling out other faiths for being like cults. In this pamphlet, CFM throws shade at pretty much every major church even going as far as equating chiropractors to witch doctors. Being a cult, that's an accusation many make about Mitchell's churches, which go by different names, Victory Chapel, The Door, or Potter's Square. Mitchell responds by saying CFM churches are not a cult, but they are bound by rules of conduct. You could call the Army a cult. You could call the Air Force a cult, because they have certain rules. I remember when I was in the military, I joined and they set us down in a hangar and, uh, and read the rules of, uh, of, of, of war to us. Uh, and they said, this is what we expect of you. We own you now. There were many former and even current Catholics in the crowd at Mitchell's faith healing event. 
Peter has been with Victory Chapel since 1994. After two of his sisters joined the church back then, at first, he was upset. I was so mad about it, and I told him, you're Catholic. And I, well, the thing about it was, uh, I was invited to a Saturday night. It's not even a church. It, uh, they call it way back the arena. It's live music and drama, and there was an invitation for salvation. And uh, the, the message was, if you want a true change from God, you gotta come down and, uh, and pray for you. I went down there Saturday night, November 1994, in an instant miracle. God delivered me from the alcohol and the drugs. I went back home, I still have beer and I still have the drugs, but I couldn't smoke, I couldn't drink. Members of Victory Chapel say Catholicism is a religion, while what Mitchell's family of churches offers is a relationship with Jesus. We don't preach just religion or doctrine, but we encourage people to have a genuine experience with Jesus Christ. They get saved, is what the Bible says. That means that there's a transformation, uh, a supernatural transformation of their personality. What's your religious background? Catholic? A lot of Catholics have eye problems because they are idol worshippers. Do you have any uh, charms? Do you have any... Uh, yes, I do. That I believe I should get rid of them. Mitchell took jabs at the Catholic faith all night, even implying that although most of Guam's indigenous population is Catholic, there was still salvation available for us. God still loves Chamorro. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dion is Victory Chapel's youth ministry leader. The young Chukese man is a very charismatic speaker who tells a compelling story about his life before and after finding Jesus. I was smoking weed, I was smoking spice, I was drinking my life away. I was going on for a very long time, since middle school. I heard the gospel for the very first time and, and that Jesus came and died on the cross. I grew up in a religious background, I knew all about it. But they really told me that there was a God in heaven that sees me, that loves me so much. In John 3, 16 it says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only son Jesus. And I couldn't grasp it. I said, why would a God send a son for a sinner like myself, because I knew who I was. I knew what I, I did in my past. Dion, talked to me about some of the things that make people leery of Victory Chapel and its reputation on Guam. There's some other people that would leave our church uh, for some odd reason, and they'll you know uh, say stuff about our church that will basically make us look bad. They don't know what we do in our church, but yet they, they say all these things because they hear from other people. They have not come to our church. I met a couple people that they would say, why, why you guys do this? Why you do that? Why is it like this? It's like, have you ever come? Have you came out before? They say, no. It's like, okay, so you have to come out to really see what we do. He even told me why most members don't watch TV, and he shared why they shun social media. Stay away from social media because we all know what's in there. We all know what's promoted in there. Immorality, sexual immorality, and sex, fame, and money. Everybody's on their phone. You go to a restaurant, people are on their phone. It's a family time. People are texting posting stuff and so it seems like technology is taking over our generation. Mitchell has been coming to the island to conduct faith healing crusades for the past 25 years. This time around chapel leaders told me thousands attended the crusades. Some have tried everything for their ailments even going to see traditional healers or as Mitchell calls them witch doctors. The witch doctors are, uh, are demonically inspired and motivated they bring curses. And so Galatians 3.13 says, Jesus hung on a tree for us to break curses. And that's what you want, is that correct? Take my hand. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break every curse. I break every curse. I repent from going to witch doctors. From word to witch doctors. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to serve you. From this moment. From this moment. I commit my life to you. I commit my life to you. Repent from rebellion. Repent from rebellion. And speak healing. And speak healing. Loosing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Others are from different faiths, but reached a point of desperation. We came from the Catholic Mass, and I saw the miracle sign, and I'm willing to try anything. This woman complained of lower back pain. Interestingly, 
chapel leaders told me to go up to the stage and film her, which I did. But it left me wondering if they knew what was coming up. I've never heard people speaking in tongues before, and coming from a Catholic background, the mood of the crusade was something different to experience, especially since we as Catholics are getting ready to head into the Lenten season, a somber period of sacrifice and reflection. Some of those here who used to be Catholics didn't mince words about what they think of their old religion now. I've been a Catholic since all my life. It never changed me. i never seen it change my brothers. i never seen it change any of my family members, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to hit on any, anybody that's Catholic, but that's just the truth. Uh, this is an experience that God wants us to do, is to pray for each other, even though, even Jesus said, pray for your enemy. My, my relative is not my enemy. I just want them to make heaven their home. I'm not condemning them. I'm not saying they're going to go to hell. But what they believe is so, it's not of the Bible. I must admit, at first I was offended, but then I thought about how Catholics feel about people who leave the faith something I've experienced firsthand, and something I've seen tear families on Guam apart. Families are family. I still visit them. I still go to the funeral. But they're, they're, they're so twisted of where I'm at because how we how I mean, this is family. They break away, and uh, you try to mend that, and they still don't want because uh, 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 my faith is different. And what does the Catholic Church think of the so-called exodus? I sat down and spoke with Father Fran Hiesel, a Jesuit priest assigned to Santa Barbara. He said Guam isn't the only place experiencing a loss in Catholic faithful. It seems to me that there's a worldwide movement out of Catholicism. Not to say that everybody is leaving, but uh, that it is beyond dispute that we've lost large numbers of people. Father Fran says the church has suffered some knockout blows with the power struggle involving the neo-catechumenal way sexual abuse scandals, and the fading of cultural Catholicism. But at the end of the day, for the church, it's a matter of quality over quantity. We're not going to get 90% of the island as practicing Catholics anymore. What we're going to do is get a, a, a smaller number of people, but dedicated number of people who are not just Catholics, but, uh, you know, full tilt Catholics. While Protestant and Catholic leaders have enjoyed friendship and an understanding that they have a common goal in our region over the years, Father Hiesel says fundamentalist groups have abandoned that spirit of cooperation in order to add more faithful to their flock. They're interested in developing their own congregations, understandably. But to do that, they have to reach into uh, you know, this person's group or that person's group. The routines and rigors of being Catholic for some can become monotonous. And Father Hiesel says Catholics may leave the church because they're looking for more of a personal connection with Jesus. The evangelicals rightly make that uh, sort of a pivotal point of their, their church teaching. Sometimes we haven't. It's engagement of the spirit, engagement of the heart. And I think that that's sometimes what's perceived to be missing from Catholicism. He doesn't believe recent sexual abuse scandals in the church are the only reason people leave the faith, but he does acknowledge the church may not be able to stop the hemorrhaging because right now its hands are full. What we have to worry about now is uh, uniting ourselves, healing the uh, rifts that are so obvious to anybody you know who lives here. And as far as families being torn apart by faith, Father Fran says we have to remain hopeful at the same time respecting our differences in belief and never forgetting what we have in common. Sometimes these people come back. Sometimes they rediscover the, uh, the beauty of the faith. There's got to be an open door. Make sure that they have a true home and treat them like they have a true home. You know, their home is with the family.